Hi everybody, today is a chicken subject. Um, you know, I realized, um, I was talking about the roost. After I talked about the roost, somebody mentioned roost height. And um, I didn't mention roost height because um, if you, I have a kind of advocate ladder roost for the most part, so they don't have to ever jump down. Although some will jump down no matter what you do. But um, I started thinking about Bumblefoot, and I know that I have mentioned Bumblefoot in the past. I've mentioned it in passing I don't know how many times. However, I haven't made a dedicated video about Bumblefoot in chickens. Um, I haven't had to deal with Bumblefoot hardly ever in the last 8 to 10 years. Um, so, um, I thought I would talk a little bit about Bumblefoot. Um, bumblefoot is caused, on, it's on the bottom of, it's, it's, it's an infection in the pad of the chicken's foot. Um, it can be on the toes, you know, the bottom pads of the toes. It could be on the actual main meaty pad of the foot. Um, and it's caused by an abrasion and bacteria gets, bacteria gets in it. It's a staph infection, basically. And um, it can cause a lot of inflammation. Um, and soreness, and they can limp or they can not limp. It just depends. There's a lot of different ways it can it can come about. Um, if you get a lot of uh, dirt between the toes or whatever, you can end up with bumblefoot there. I mean, there's but generally most of the time you're going to find bumblefoot right on that meaty pad of the foot. And um, I will actually, I went back and looked in my chicken health folders and where I put a lot of uh, necropsy photos and things like that, and I have. Um, I found a few bumblefoot pictures from many years ago. I think the latest I had was like 2012. Um, and I'll put those up here. Um, but uh, in many, many years I've not had to deal with bumblefoot. Um, there are some, t some birds that have chronic bumblefoot. And a lot of that has to do with... Um, it's, sometimes it's just the way that they walk. For example, um, my black Plymouth Rock Emily keeps persistent. She for a long time kept persistent bumblefoot on both feet. Um, she had some sort of tendon damage in one leg, and I don't know why that is. She kind of walks stiff-legged. She has an odd gait. And the pad of her foot, instead of just being down here, it kind of gets squished. And it, it, there's an edge of it gets flattened underneath her toes, and she ends up with bumblefoot right there behind her toes a lot. She always did anyway. And I think actually one of the old pictures from 2012, um, a show of the uh, hen with her foot bandaged after bumblefoot surgery. I think it is Emily. I think I marked it as Emily. But um, in the last few years, even Emily has kind of toned down. I used to. I used to do bumblefoot surgery all the time, but let me tell you, the first way I encountered bumblefoot is when I made a landing bar in front of a, of a nest box, and I made it with PVC pipe, and because it was slippery, in my ignorance back then, 15 years ago, I put that non-skid tape, which is like sandpaper, on that, and when they jump up, they would actually scratch their feet. Um, so I set up a big, bad cycle of bumblefoot. I was constantly doing bumblefoot surgeries. Um, one time, my hen June, she had a bumblefoot a plug that actually came up to the, it pushed up through the front of her feet between her toes. It looked like a pencil eraser sticking up. I went, this thing is pushed all the way through her foot. I've never had that happen before. But that just goes to show you it, it manifests in several different ways. Now, um, if you see a black scab on the bottom pad of the foot, that's usually bumblefoot. That's what you're looking at. Um, now the pad may be swollen and inflamed and red, or it may not be. It may not be swollen at all. It might just have that scabby looking thing on the on the pad of the foot. Um, I don't do bumblefoot surgery anymore. Unless it is actually extremely inflamed and, and it's swollen badly and they're limping badly. That means there's a lot of pressure in there. What happens is, as you know, if you have chickens for very long, the way their body handles infection is they solidify it. Pus turns into solid mass of this cheesy looking, it's almost like mozzarella cheese. It's like very cheesy looking masses. And right under that scab, you're going, when you, if you decide to do surgery, what you're going to do is you are going to take a 
disinfected X-Acto knife, which is, you know, a triangular shaped razor blade, and you are going to go around the or for first you're going to have to take your hen and you're going to have to wrap her up because she's going to flinch. Um, it may be very sore, but you're not going to dig down in there, okay? What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to, in, in the picture you'll see, on one of the pictures the scab is starting to pull out of the foot. It's starting to push out of the foot. And you'll see a very defined edge. What, what I tended to do was I would take a razor blade, the exacto, and I would go underneath the edge, just kind of under the edge of the scab, and I would just all the way around lift up slightly on the scab so I loosened that scab. And then I would take a pair of tweezers, and I would take that whole plug, and I would very carefully pull it out. A lot of times what will happen is an entire plug, this cheesy-looking plug, will come out with the scab. Sometimes when you, you push on that, you'll find that there's more inside the pad. Many times all I'll do, I would do, is just so you don't dig around there. Because the more you dig, the more likely you are to make that foot do something horrible like go necrotic. I had that happen one time, and it wasn't because of the surgery. The hen had an, an internal infection that I wasn't aware of. She was very young. She was a Wyandotte. They are so, hatchery wine dots are so prone to internal laying egg yolk peritonitis, and she had an infection inside. She was only a year and a half old. I did not know that. And her foot didn't even have bad bumble foot. I just flicked out the little scab, put her bandage on, and her foot literally went, it died. It went necrotic. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. But then I found out when I did a necropsy on her, I realized she had egg yolk peritonitis. So her body was already in, in a, a down state. But um, you don't want to be digging around in there. The best thing to do is carefully loosen around the edges of that scab. Very, don't dig in there, but just at, at an angle, sort of like, sort of like a, sort of like a 45 degree angle. Just kind of go around and just loosen up the edge of that scab, and then with tweezers, just carefully pull that out. And if you if you pull it slow, you might get you might get a lot of the infection. You might get all the infection out, all the plug out. Then you would pack that with antibiotic ointment. Um, you don't want anything with any um, um, well. You don't you don't want any. Um, what is the name of the thing? My brain is fried. Don't put the painkiller stuff now. The the triple antibiotic or the triple, I can't even speak today, the triple antibiotic ointment has a painkiller called Promoxine. That's not a problem. It's the other uh, painkillers that tend to be an issue. Um, but just the Promoxine is not a problem. But just, if, if you have plain triple antibiotic ointment, you pack it in there, or you can rinse it out with Betadine, and then pack that with ointment, and then put a, put a gauze pad on it and wrap Used, we got to where we were using um, soft strips of t-shirt and then you or you can use vat wrap but vat wrap tends to tighten and tighten and tighten just something to keep that pad because it may bleed on you um, I I don't have any bumblefoot surgery videos um, unfortunately because I don't know that I filmed any back then and I did they would have been with very bad camera equipment um, but lately I have decided pretty much that unless it is actually critical, like she's limping, her pet is very huge and inflamed and swollen, I don't mess with it. Now, back to Emily, Miss Chronic Bumblefoot. I had another hen who had chronic bumblefoot. Um, the biggest hen I ever have, I think she was about a 12, she's as big as a Brahma. She was a, she was one of my uh, Blue Orpington Swades hens, Meg, big flaming red hen. She was half uh, Rhode Island Red and half exhibition size Buff Orpington, and she was huge. She had she had sort of curved toes, and she had the biggest, fattiest pads ever. And she always kept Bumblefoot. I must have done surgery on that that both those fin, her both of her feet for, gosh, for years I did surgery on her for Bumblefoot. Um, she got better later on. She died about seven and a half years old. She was a huge hen. Um, you will also find that your heavier birds get that more. When they land, when they jump down from things, they tend to slide. And when they slide, they scrape their feet. This is another thing where roost comes in. For very large birds, you don't want roost high up off the ground. Um, 
if you have a ladder roost, I mean, I would say no more than four feet off the ground if they have a way to climb up. You don't want to just stick a four foot high bar in there and no way to get up there. Big heavy birds have a lot of foot pounds of pressure when they boom, when they hit that floor, when they hit that floor with that weight behind it, they tend to slide. That's where they get abrasions and they can get bumblefoot. So roosts are important in that regard. Not just smooth roosts, but also for very heavy birds, you don't want to be having extremely high roosts that they have to fly up to and fly down from. It's not the flying up that's the problem, it's the flying down. Um, and they skid on the floor. Um, because even no matter how much bedding you put in, they're going to scrape aside the bedding and they'll end up with a bare spot and they'll end up hitting the hard floor. So that's the way it goes with chickens. You can't, you plan everything and they laugh at you. But um, bumblefoot is a staph infection. People say when you do a bumblefoot surgery, you need to wear gloves and, and everything because it's a staph infection. You can't touch your, you can't touch it. And you know what? I just do it because I can't manipulate with gloves and I just do it and then I wash my hands afterward. Um, now if you have cuts on your hands, you might want to wear gloves because, you know, if you're going to squeeze that nasty stuff out of there and get it on your hands, you definitely want to wash your hands. I mean, it's a staph infection. But, I mean, you don't have to wear a hazmat suit to do bumblefoot surgery. And I wouldn't dig around in that in there. The best thing to do is just get that plug out and, and whatever comes with it, anything that you can press out of there, cheesy pieces that easily come out, don't dig around in there because that's very painful for them. Put Pack it with antibiotic, antibiotic ointment, wrap their feet so that, um, you know, and it's going to bleed some sometimes. Sometimes they will bleed and sometimes they won't. Gauze pad and then something to cover the gauze pad so they don't be eating on it, because um, they'll pick at it. And you'll find my chickens got so many bandages off. But I'll show you the picture of Emily, um, 12 years ago. There's and I think there's a couple of pictures of uh, some other bird. I don't know who that was. I mean, it's hard to tell. One's black, and I think it was Emily. But um, you can tell that one bumblefoot is not so swollen, the other one is. I also went out there and took pictures of Emily's bo both of Emily's feet today, and she's almost 11 years old. She'll be 11 in February or so, I think. And I told you she always had bum bumblefoot on both feet. One is completely clear right now. The other one has minor bumblefoot, not enough to mess with. Um, I quit doing surgery on hers, and every once in a while I found out that she'll... It, the pad, the, the scab, and the infection would kind of heal up inside, and the, pe the, the bumble, as they put it, the black scab, would kind of work its way out, and it's just, you can just flick it off sometimes. It just it heals up from the inside out if it's not too terrible. Um, Emily's a very, she's a, she's a rock, a Plymouth rock, but she always, her body type has tended to be way heavy. She's more round than she should be as a rock. And she always was kind of a hefty girl. Plus, she had that tendon damage, so she always walked funny. And I think that's what lended um, the situation to Bumblefoot for her. Um, but, like I said, in the, in the last eight years or so, I haven't even had to mess with Bumblefoot. She's the only one that ever really gets it. Um, and, of course, my roosts have changed a lot. As you saw, my roosts are quite wide. There are, most of them are shelves. And Hector sits on... Hector... <coughs> God love him, sits on top of a nest box. He doesn't want to sit on a ladder roost in there. He wants to sit on top of the nest box and jump down. I keep trying to put the, the bedding under where he jumps down, but, he, you know, they, they dig it aside. So you can't guarantee you're going to be able to get him a nice landing pad. But anyway, um, Bumblefoot is just... It's just something you just need to check for from time to time. It's key, it helps to keep up with that. If it's just a scab and it doesn't look swollen or anything, you might not want to mess with it. Um, you could also uh, soak. A lot of times I'll soak the foot before I do anything in Epsom salt water to soften everything up. Um, I might soak it in Epsom salt water after I take the bumble out um, because that kind of uh, the salt in there tends to disinfect up inside the wound if you don't have betadine. If you do have the betadine, you squirt that in there. Um, but it's just a matter of getting whatever infection out that you can get out and packing it with some kind of antibiotic cream, ointment, uh, after washing out with betadine or whatever. Epsom salt soaks can help. It also helps alleviate swelling, uh, softens up the bumble. And, um, but you know, you be very careful with doing those surgeries. Uh, I had to do so many at the beginning because of 
uh, the roost in the other coop the way they were and them jump they, them jumping down more I didn't have ladders up to them and they had to jump down more and they just so many had so much bumblefoot it just um, but once thing the roost were the character of the roost were changed they were lowered um, and you know it just the whole the situation changed and so the bumblefoot basically has been eradicated except for Emily's picture today you will see that one foot is totally clear the other foot has a very minor bumblefoot on there and you can barely see it. it's not really a black scab it's just sort of a elongated brownish scab on there but it's not anything I'm going to treat if she begins to limp I'll check her out and if she's got a scab that's getting a big it's like it's like walking a pebble for them um, it's like the, if the scab is big it's like walking on a pebble and you, can, you know how that would feel in your shoe, right? So that's the bumblefoot talk. Um, if you make sure that the roost are smooth, you have, you, they don't have to jump down, especially the big birds. The little birds, I don't ever have to treat for bumblefoot. I think one time I had, I had one bantam hen that had a bumble on her foot. One time, and all the time I've had birds. Um, and I don't know why that was. I'm not sure what she was doing to start that up um, because light that's I mean this bird's less than two pounds so very lightweight birds don't tend to have that issue for the most part unless you got them on sandpaper and roost so there you go um, hope the pictures if you weren't sure what bumblefoot looked like you you know now um, and I wish I had a picture of that bumble that went up through the front the top of June's foot that was strange um, and the thing is, it, went, it had already gone up through the top, and I just pushed the bottom, and it just popped right out. And all I had to do was pack the wound so dirt didn't get into the foot again, and then wrap her foot until it closed over. Um, so there you go. It's uh, hopefully the way you manage your inside coop will help prevent that. And um, But if you ever see that, that's what it is. The, the black scab or the brown scab or but um, just always have in your chicken arsenal have you an exacto knife and have you some alcohol to disinfect that with have you some antibiotic ointment you can pack that with or you know, beta dine to wash it out with Epsom salt for Epsom salt soaks of the foot um, that's it so I don't know that I'm leaving anything out um, if there's something you think of that I've left out, let me know, and I'll answer it below. Okay?